you can already start doing it while I'm doing it. I'm not gonna be too too fast when I do when I try these things. So uh, to help you doing that, I'm gonna do something like this. So I'm gonna resize my window. If I'm able to resize it. Okay. So that now on one half of your zoom screen there will be my window, but you can use the other half for your own link for your own amnesia tool. So the link you find it in the in the outline of today. So if you scroll it a little bit down, this is the actual tool. And uh, it's uh, run by this or it's I don't know if how to explain, but like it's this open IRE is um, important organization when it comes to open science in um, in Europe. And uh, so fair principle and other things that are related to open science and data management and things like that. And so Amnesia is like the tool that they provide. And uh, to actually start, I think I have to just get started. So with Amnesia, you can actually install it and it works, but in some cases and often people don't have, if you get a laptop from your university, you might not have the rights for installing things. You can apply for them, of course, but um, what is good here is that you can also run it from the, from the web. If I, I think here online version so i went on the corner here and i clicked on online version all right so now this is i mean the the, the tool that you could install yourself looks looks very similar so now you see i have the tool here and you can do the same you can open the same link and now i recommend to or it's good to test it with the data sets that they that they provide in their example so if you go back to the main page of the course uh, that's the documentation that you can read, of course. Uh, and here you get the demo data set. So you can download this zip file that is linked here and save it and unzip it somewhere, for example, on your on your desktop or download folder. So I've already done this. So I've already downloaded this data set.zip and unpacked it. And so then I put it on my desktop and it's in this folder called Amnesia Dataset. So here there are different scenarios and uh, the scenarios that we are going to do now is this, the one that has the word simple, because it's always good to start simple. <laughs> so with this uh, simple table, this based scenario and uh, we pick, for example, the data set one. So now I went into the subfolder data one. You see the path here. If you manage to download the data, you can try to do the same or you can do it soon. As soon as I'm done with this demo. So I click on new data. And now basically it's asking me, okay, what is in this file? So it's good, of course, to also check things. Um, how can I say outside with other with other tools? So I recommend also opening the folder with your file manager. And in this case, it's a txt file, meaning that it's textual only. So I click on this, and basically, it's a so-called comma separated value where the first row are the labels of the columns so zip code age credit card number gender and salary I mean, whatever the data doesn't really matter what these are it's just you know some personal data uh, and then there's some maybe ten thousand I don't remember now so of this actual value so right now the data is not anonymized or de-identified I mean, it is the identifier because you don't have the name and surname, but of course already the credit card is a strong identifier 
because the bank would immediately link it to, to an individual. So basically, if we go back to the tool, once I imported this data, it's asking me about what is the, the limiter, which specifically, you know, basically the, the symbol that separates all the columns. So often you have the, this uh, comma like we have here, but sometimes you might have more, let's say that if, if the comma is used inside a table, inside a field, inside the column, then you sometimes you might have other types of of the limiters with the data that you have. And in this case, it's just a simple table. So we don't, they have an example for this um, tables where there are columns that have a set of values, but I think I would not gonna talk about them today. And you can eventually do it on your own. All right, so then I click next. And now it's kind of quality check, you know, the, the tool understood itself that the zip code is an integer because they're all stored as integers. The age is also an integer. Then this credit card is also a number. The, this gender column is a string. And then another number here, integer salary. So everything looks good, meaning that the, you know, if there will be an error, you could kind of fix it here if the tool misunderstood the value of something. And at this stage, you know, maybe you already know that you don't want to store the credit card in your the identify version. So you could even click this here. Now I keep that column because I want to show that the tool actually removes that anyway. But in general, yeah, you might, uh, you might not want to upload something that is already known to be sensitive. Okay, then I click finish. And now that it's in the memory, so all this is running on your browser. So what is useful is that um, you don't, uh, you know, you're not uploading your sensitive, data. even though you're using a web tool, you're not uploading the sensitive data to their website and doing something, you know, that would be not very, how can I say, ethical, can we say like that? But um, so this is an application that is running on your on your on your web browser, and so now we have all this data, and we can start doing basically what we did on Monday. So check the level of anonymization of the data. So now I find this tool very handy because I can use it wherever I want. I don't need to install anything. Let's say that I'm peer reviewing a study paper and then they attach some tables with the micro data with the with subject level information you know i could i could make sure that they're not you know that they that they respected some some of these criteria for example for anonymization so by loading the, the table that would come with the peer review paper i put it here and i can immediately still do this check for anonymization so for example i pick the age and I could choose some level of K, let's say five. We will talk later. I will talk later about what is the, the right K. So now basically I'm checking, okay, is the age, are the age groups in this specific data set, do they have at least a, a K of five? So that there's at least five individuals who have the exact same age. And then I click on show anonymization. And so age is anonymous for k equal to six. So actually in this data set, it's even better. So there's at least six um, uh, individuals who share the same age. So it's a, it's, you know, in, in this case, there's not much action to do and I can keep the whole data set. But imagine that I would have liked to have a more strict K value of 10. So then when I click show anonymization, it's actually telling me <clears throat> what we knew, okay, that age is anonymous for a K level of anonymization six. But if you want to really have a K level of anonymization 10, you need to get rid of 17% of your data. You need to suppress those subjects. And then you would click this button and basically would remove those 
those rows, those participants that does that do not meet this requirement of having at least you know ten individuals with the exact same age. Right now, not suppressing anything. Let me switch off the bell. Right now, I'm not suppressing anything, but um, but once again, this is um, this is useful if you you know let's say that you have a big data set imagine registry data with many thousands of, of lines you are fine you know even if you need to throw away some some 10 percent of your data you still have a big data set and so you you kind of you accept the compromise of not uh, including those individuals that have a very unique age like you know often in even in uh, you know even without this k anonymization you often see for example that in let's say the medical literature if anyone is older than 80 the age is not reported meaning that you know even in finland or in, in many countries if someone you know the oldest person in the in the country there's always a new story about the oldest person in the country and then if you would identify that single person in your data set in, from a registry it wouldn't be you know it would be a bit that, that person and kind of everybody know, could know who that person is all right but anyway we checked the anonymization and we did this kind of what we were doing on on monday and now we can actually anonymize the data so if you remember what we discussed on monday for example when it comes about age the idea would be that we can bean together different range of age so for example that people in their let's say 20s and 30s could be merged into the same age group so this is one technique to basically increase this level of k we already have a level of k of six with the age but eventually you know maybe maybe we still want to have it higher for whatever reason so then we can set up these hierarchies which basically means that you know now the age is fine grained as an integer but now with the hierarchy we will start merging together many numbers let's say all the numbers from 20 to 40 into a single hierarchy so the idea of a hierarchy is that it, it would be like a like a pyramid so the data that you downloaded in the same folder there are also this hierarchy hierarchy files so Let's have a look how they are coded. So I open now the this hierarchy file for the age. And basically, so they invented a new age called 101. And this new age contains basically it's it's just a it's just a label it would be saying people in age group one and it's people who have 18 19 etc etc up to 27 so kind of the young adults are in this group one and now they label it 101 then the group two with the label 102 has the people from 28 to 37 years old and etc so basically they created uh, these nine groups with the label 101 102 103 so you can think that these are now fake ages and uh, and this is the mapping between the actual age that was in the data set and the kind of uh, so-called generalized age and then of course there can be a further level in the hierarchy so if now these are the bottom level of the hierarchy this is one level higher then the top level would be another group that is called as a label 110 where everybody where all these groups here so in this case the it's not anymore generalization but it becomes suppression so it this would basically mean give to everyone the value of 110 so then the age column is basically you know does not contain any information if every row contains exactly the same value so it's an hierarchy with the with basically three levels the level the, the fine grain level of leaving the data as they are the mid you know big blur level of having kind of nine groups and then the the 
top level where everything is blonde. So this height three you see here. So now don't worry too much about this um, format of the file because with the tool you can actually create your own hierarchies. So you don't have to start manually, you know. I mean, you can of course do it manually. There's nothing wrong in it if it's manually, but uh, but this um, amazing tool also allows you to create this this range. For example, imagine that you want to have different ranges in your in your in your tool. Okay, now so I go back to Amnesia, and now it says here proceed to hierarchies. So now I can start basically uploading. I could do this. This is what I meant earlier. This how to generate hierarchy, and you can test it yourself soon. We have this um, practical session that you can do in group. But now here I'm loading the hierarchies that are in the same folder where the where the data was. So there is this age one. And then I also add the hierarchy of the salary. We didn't open this, but the idea is similar. I can show it. And basically we have multiple values of salaries. You know, and once again they group together the people with the low salary and they gave them this you know random number or whatever group label of what is that 10001 and then similarly there's this uh, kind of label of 10011 that has everyone so here this is called suppression you you lose the column salary these are generalization so you generalize the, the fine grain values and if you don't apply any anonymization, you, you, you keep these fine, fine grain values that they are in the data. Okay, so now, so now here we have these two um, hierarchies, and the tool actually visualizes these hierarchies, as I was saying earlier. So that, um, so for example, now this group that was called, um, what was it, uh, 10,010? Basically, here it shows graphically what I showed you when I opened the, the PXT file. So basically, all the salaries here at the fine grain level, they're all mapped. Like these salaries here are mapped into this group. So now we, there are these colors, and the colors basically mean that if it's red, it's not anonymized. So if at this stage here, it would mean that these, these values are the ones that you get in the data. As, as given originally they were you know these are not anonymized instead here in the, with the blue level so this is the this group label for all this set of values and then on top of there's this group label that kind of has everything which here would basically mean remove that salary value the same thing i can also pick the age and it's the same idea so that this this group that had the label 101, these were the young adults. So if I double click, you see here that uh, I can ask for I need to make the window a bit bigger. Sorry. Um, you see that they go from 18 to 27, like we saw in the, in the PXT file. All right, so actually, it was good that I opened the window a bit because basically we are following this. Uh, these steps that you see here on the on the left so that um, it's always good to restart if for something goes wrong so we added the data and we added the hierarchies and now we can pick kind of now we can do the actual the identification so i click on algorithms and uh, okay this is, shows me basically the original data then i can scroll down a bit and now it's asking me, okay, which hierarchies do you want to use? Maybe actually, I'm sorry if, I mean, we had this nice layout that you could follow, but I'm going to maximize the window because now there's so many, um, there's so many boxes in this page. But then eventually, you know, hopefully this is not, you can, you will soon do this on, on your own. So, so, so now basically, I can apply these hierarchies that I define. So for the for the column age, I'm applying the hierarchy age. 
and then we have one for the salary. We didn't really have other hierarchies here. Um, and then my limit, let's say that I want to have this k value of five. This is what I want. So now the well now let's click let's just click this execute. All right. So now what you see here is the so-called lattice. So this is I spend a little bit of time explaining this because this is common in almost every anonymization tool. So now the idea of the lattice is that, that you can think it of um, like if if you if instead of looking it in, in this way, if you look it in you know it, it's basically a square you know it's basically a square with with some values and these values are telling us you know in in one direction you have kind of the the age anonymization and in the other direction you have this salary anonymization so here in the bottom zero zero it would basically say do not you say it, it says it here with, with the mouse do not generalize age and do not generalize salary so at, zero, at the level zero zero we are not applying any anonymization this is the original data and this is why it's marked in red it's marked in red because because the, we said that, that we wanted to have a value of k of five. And of course, you know, here there's no way that this is k of five. Then this other node here would say, okay, I generalize the age uh, to the level one. So this would mean grouping the, the subject into those nine age groups, but I keep the salary as a, you know, not generalized. And again, it's red, which means, sorry, you, you, this is this data for these two variables, it's not k anonymous at the level of five. Then here's the other way around. So age is kept at the fine grain and salary is generalized into those nine subgroups. And again, the data is not, is not good. Here would be that they, both the age and the salary are generalized with the categories that we, created in the hierarchies and even at this stage it doesn't satisfy the k level of uh, of five but here this now is a different color so this means that age without any generalization so it, it basically means what we saw at the beginning that age without any you know without any anonymization to apply already at the k level of six so that's good and then salary is generalized to the level of two, which basically means get rid of everything. So this node here actually satisfies the, the anonymity of, uh, of five that we set now, which basically means get rid of the column salary and keep the column age as it is because it was already anonymous for level five. Or then maybe, you know, maybe you don't want to get rid of the salary. So having a two on the second element would mean getting rid of the salary. And you still want to keep the salary so then if you want to keep the salary because that's more important for your study as a variable that could explain something then in this case then you need to accept the compromise that then age needs to be generalized to the level of two which basically means you need to get rid of the column age so basically we have this kind of compromise that if you care more about the age and salary is not a variable that was interesting in your study, just get rid of salary so that there's no risks that somebody gets identified or maybe the other way around that maybe salary is more important. You can't really keep it at the fine grain value because it's not K anonymous, but you can have these groups, you know, uh, ranges of, of salaries and that's fine. And the top here is basically that both age and salary are removed from the data set. So then given this given these two variables then yes you are you have a the identified data so now for example even though this node doesn't meet our requirement of canonymity of of um what was it five i can still double click on it and basically it means that i applied the transformation so i i anonymized the data and now after double clicking so you see that the age the original ages are now remapped into this uh, group age ranges 105 102 and the same for the salaries that the original salaries are 
are remapped into this. The tool also is clever enough to know, okay, you have a field called credit card, I'm gonna get rid of it. And so it has replaced all these individual credit card numbers with, uh, with a fake credit card number. Everything else was not touched because we didn't, we didn't do any kind of, of this spatial, uh, how can I say, hierarchies to also anonymize the zip code. And then I guess there's a button somewhere that you can, yes, download the anonymized dataset locally. Okay, so now the task for you is to redo what I just did. Maybe you already, if you already done it while I was doing it, then you, you have uh, 15 minutes of relax. But um, so the idea, I think it, it's good to work in groups because some people might have already figured it all out and already maybe did it and some people maybe they were not even able to find the link to open the tool you know we are very diverse and i'm not expecting anything from anyone but so what i would like you to do is that you pick a room randomly and join other people and i hope that those people who feel more confident with the tool would kind of take the lead in the room and show how they do it but of course i'm not forcing anyone you know if you want to test it on your own you can stay here in the main room and test it on your own or you know, whatever you want but the idea is exactly this so to also give you um, a description of the tasks that you are supposed to do basically to replicate what i just did if you go back to the web page of the of today so that's the link for the demo data this is the exercise that we did the number one i left the number two there for not for this for this day but basically if you follow this link to this pdf here it's exactly this this, this task that we did and um, i can already tell you that there will be mistakes sometimes the tool fails it's easy to just press the start and start from fresh and again reload the data the tool is quite fast so at least with the, my laptop is nothing special with the one I have here. So at least with this, it's uh, decently fast. So I would say that 15 minutes, it took me 15 minutes, not going too fast, but of course I knew <laughs> where to click. So spend some 15 minutes with others or alone and, and try to do this, uh, this task here, this, um, um, number one it's basically kind of the state of the art i'm not at least 100 percent sure if there's anything better from the commercial but when it comes to um, what is being used in um, in uh, research and especially in medical and biomedical research so arx is a very good and excellent data organization tool briefly i'm not going to give you a demo of the tool first because I don't have it installed on this machine, but also because it takes much more time compared to this um, Amnesia simple tool that we tested. But you, it's, you will, if you want to learn it and if you want to install it, you will start seeing the same thing that you saw with Amnesia. So that uh, you load the data, you define this, um, this uh, I can maybe show bits from, the, from this um, demo video. You can, of course, watch it yourself. You don't need to to watch it with me, but um, I keep it silent. But uh, I guess let me check that you see the YouTube because sometimes, yeah. So I'm jumping now, but uh, so here's loading the data, and basically you have a view of the data, and then here on this, um, if you see where my mouse is, here you have you can basically specify these hierarchies like we did with Amnesia. So for example, I scroll a bit forward in time. So yeah, for example, here, I go back a bit. Uh, here it was defining that male and female, the top hierarchy would be to merge them. So then the level zero, in, in this case, there's just two levels, the zero and the one, instead in the one that we had earlier, we had more. I think here now is creating more more levels for the for the hierarchy age 
basically what we did earlier and uh, you know it's a little bit different way so now you're specifying a range for the age and and kind of the step and then defining all this uh, you know basically what we already did with uh, amnesia but what what is the advantage of this tool if you see here where my mouse is now is that it's not just this k anonymity that we did that we tested with the amnesia tool but you also have this other L diversity t closeness that are kind of increasing the safety or the robustness of the anonymization technique because with k anonymity if uh, a malicious person has some background knowledge of the people who, who are supposed to be in the data set then with k anonymity using that malicious knowledge you could re-identify or at least uh, if not 100 percent identify but at least single out that kind of level of k or oh, sorry that that kind of value range that has the subject where you know something about so so here yeah yeah basically saying what i was just saying about this anonymity is if i remember correctly it's going to set a value of five yeah and then it runs the algorithm here yeah one thing that here you can also specify i'll show this i missed stop uh, the, the youtube <laughs> scroll bar on top but here in the bottom is you can actually specify this uh, how much you know in this case he wants his setting so that age should be it's more important to kind of uh, anonymize age than other variables so you can set kind of weights so that when you build this this um, this lattice this graph of all the of all the of all the solutions more importance can be given to age and then as we saw it, it produces in this case it's binning those histogram here in the bottom you would have the uh, kind of original age and here the ranges and then i think somewhere there is also this lattice yeah so here is the lattice of all the solutions in this case it's a very big it's a very big one because um, there were many you know earlier we only had kind of age and uh, what was the other one salary with two levels but here there are multiple that the anonymization was done for 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 multiple variables like uh, age and race and and sex and i don't remember now in this example so kind of the concepts you understood them because it's the same that you saw in uh, amnesia but um, a little bit more powerful tool and allows you to do this uh, these kind of things so feel free to like if you know that your case is how can i say serious enough that would require something more powerful feel free to explore this and install it and try to try to run it the tool is well made the developers are active they they publish videos they publish conferences posters the tool itself is not just a graphical tool that you saw here but you can also use it um, programmatically it's a little bit tedious to set up but basically you can kind of you you can think they have this arx engine running on your on your machine and then let's say from python you can you can call these algorithms from this arx engine they did this because arx this arx is built in uh, in java and so with this uh, with the, the the java engine basically can be queried as they say from other languages like python i think that here i even put some later in the bottom there should be some links but we can come later when i'm talking about python but there are there are some python packages that are kind of linking that, that so from python you can actually use this arx tool 
Okay, so now that we tested it, at least these two, I don't know if they're the most famous one, but at least the ones that I've seen used in, uh, in research. So the good side of amnesia is that it's simple to explore properties of a tabular data set, and I find it handy if I'm in a machine that I don't have it installed, that I can use it. But as already pointed out, maybe, you know, maybe this web version is not the most handy and maybe it's not something you want to use for very sensitive data, very large data set. And other things that I've noticed or that you also notice is this, um, that only this K anonymity is um, kind of the algorithm implemented there for, for anonymization. And then, yeah, also what I wrote the other, it needs to be installed for larger data sets and also somebody already already discovered. I also personally find it difficult, while well, this is more a conceptual thing, it's not really a limitation. This is a bit of an issue of any graphical tools that, um, that the sequences of steps that you did for reaching, let's say, for, for generating some anonymous data set might be difficult to track down all these sub steps unless you write them down. So from a reproducibility point of view, it would be better to kind of use a tool that would allow the scripting of those steps. If you're interested here, yeah, by the way, just a parenthesis that I'm going to talk about this kind of questionable research practices and reproducibility in one of our series of um, data management trainings. So in a couple of weeks, if you want to spend one hour in the morning, you get the link there. Then when it comes to ARX, as you saw, it's uh, like the concepts, the, the things that are there are basically the same that Amnesia is, but um, there are more algorithms and there are more ways of kind of evaluating the eff eff efficiency and efficacy of these um, anonymization tools. But of course, comes also with a steeper learning curve. Not, not, not too steep, meaning that you can still, like, I wouldn't expect that it would take you much longer than the time that you spent with Amnesia to get something similar. But then, of course, one needs to start understanding you know, do you, are you happy with K anonymity? Do you want, I don't know, P closeness? So it's um, more options come with uh, more questions in the end. So maybe one take of message, which one to choose? I repeat a little bit what I just said earlier, but in practice, my rule of thumb, you know, this is not, uh, how can I say, this is at least how I see it that uh, this, if, if you don't have too many participants in your in your data set if you have uh, like an excel sheet that basically it, it's not too big effort to go through each row manually then just you know you can even do it manually and um, often many i mean i'm not saying that uh, that too many cases but there are many you know i've been involved in many uh, projects where the numbers are of this range and so maybe a anonymization tool with all the fancy algorithms is not really it's, it's a bit of an overkill but then then you it's kind of you know then you have the opposite end that you might have a data set that there is 200 or more participants like uh, thousands of participants and maybe then you, you you don't have just a handful of columns like just sex and age but you start having loads and loads of um, personal data in your and uh, variables in your in your tabular data set then maybe it's time to invest some uh, some energy and some effort in ARX or as I write here your preferred programming language so that often at least people who need to deal with very large data set most likely they are also uh, processing this large data set using some scripting language and then maybe you want to then test something some libraries or some options that are already available in your favorite programming language so this was the first reflection then there's another reflection here which already came in the hack and questions 
which is the, you know, what is this magic K number, which technique, you know, should we, should we choose which value of K number and which technique should we choose? Like, is it K anonymity? Is it, uh, what are those, uh, L diversity, T closeness? In practice, I don't have the answer for this and nobody has the answer for this because it's, um, it's 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 a bit maybe even annoying that there's no clear answer but then if they would if somebody you know let's say if an authority would say okay everything needs to be k anonymous at least five something bad might happen anyway and then the authority of course doesn't want to take the responsibility that oh yeah we said five but sorry we should have said 50. so the number will might change given the kind of sensitivity of the data set that you work with and in general the technique needs to adapt with the sensitivity and the risk so that um, there is no clear solution for everyone so now i've thought of a new funny exercise that we could do i'm also going to do it myself in um, here and so it would basically be a google scholar exercise so the idea here is that we can divide into breakout rooms according to the topic. I'm now gonna copy this to the HackMD so you can edit. Give me a second. And this here. So the idea is that each group of people working on a specific topic, and I just mentioned three of the topics that came up in the previous days, but you know, there might be more. Don't maybe write a topic so specific, so specific because maybe you're gonna be alone, but it's okay to be alone. If you wanna do this exercise on your own, it's, it's fine. And basically what I'm asking you is just, just pick Google Scholar, or if you have some other database that you prefer, PubMed, Scopus, whatever, and try to, quickly search for articles in your field that would mention, for example, anonymization, key anonymity. I'm not, you know, it might take more than 15 minutes to immediately find an article that they apply this, this technique. Often you search for these keywords and you, you get some sort of opinion articles that they say, yes, we should do anonymization. But so in general, if you find an article in your field where they actually applied some of these techniques, you can add the link here. So then we're basically building a nice set of papers that is forming kind of the um, a small literature, literature research in our course here. So that now we're basically having a look, okay, what are the people out there putting as a, as a value of K? or is, is anyone in, I don't know, medical images actually using K anonymity or is it just, you know, that everyone knows that this technique exists but nobody actually uses. So this is uh, some 15 minutes between you and Google, Google Scholar. And uh, it's good that you do it for your field because, you know, um, my background is in medical imaging. So maybe I might f easily find some articles from that, from that field, but I wouldn't know where to start, you know, with the, uh, let's say qualitative methods with interviews or I don't know, some um, papers from economics where they anonymize data from companies. So I, I wouldn't even know if, which one is a good journal, which one is a bad journal. So let's try to find lots of papers. And uh, now the time is um, 13.35. Let's take 10 minutes and maybe a little bit more. Maybe let's do 15 minutes. I'm also going to do this task myself and you can watch me doing it if you, if you don't want to do it. But in my opinion, it's, it's nice that 26 people can, can, you know, use their brain power and find you know, at least those of you who work with personal data and this type of things. Okay, so the breakout rooms are open and you can join.
but reflection on what we just saw, that stays also on the records, but it was very challenging task to find what other people have used to anonymize their tabular microdata. So we, I've, we found anything from k equals to three to 10 to thousands. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit disappointing that people don't mention it, but I also guess that a possible explanation is the fact that maybe people do not share this data. It's kind of a chicken and egg because maybe people don't share because they don't know which value okay to put or which technique to use. And then because of that, nobody shares this information and of which value to use. So we, we really don't have, in, in the end, I can understand maybe, you know, people would rather play it safe rather than risking if, if the information is very sensitive. All right, of course, the situation is different and you will see it next week when it comes to more complex data, because then if you, you know, the data, if the data is an interview, like a speech, somebody talking, or if the data is a brain image or a time series, then, then, you know, if you see a face of somebody talking, you might, maybe not you exactly, you will, will recognize it, but many others might know that person and, and the person itself would recognize and say, hey, why did you publish my interview? All right, so for this final hour, we go a little bit more complex, not in the sense that things get more difficult, but more in the sense that often people, if they can use their coding skills, their knowledge with the Python, whatever, R, MATLAB, etc., they might use, um, uh, you know other techniques that they've learned from from other fields to basically obtain the same task which is this canonization so at the end of the day i don't know many of you know what i mean when i say clustering and the problem of clustering in uh, computer science and mathematics in general but i give you a graphical explanation which is actually created these pictures were made to explain the so-called multidimensional K anonymity. Because the K anonymity that we saw so far kind of works at the level of uh, one variable. So for example, you want the K anonymity of, e of five for the age. So then you want that at least five individuals in your data have exactly the same age, all right? So imagine that now this would be this here that I'm highlighting with the mouse would be the age. So let's say that this dot here, this level here is 18. This is maybe 19. These are people in their 20s, people in their, I don't know, 30s, 40s, etc. Okay. So this is the age. The K anonymity, for example, you know, I want to put all the young adults here and the older adults there. So now with this kind of anonymization, of replacing the original age with, you know, with a label like young adults, older adults. We have a K anonymity of, uh, let me count it, one, two, three, four, five, six in this cluster, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in this other cluster. So, well, there's a K anonymity of six with this first split, all right? So basically, if the only variable that we care about is this age on the X axis, we draw a line and we create two almost equal clusters, one of with six and the other with seven. And we reach the anonymity of, uh, of six. So the clustering is exactly this problem that you have like a cake, like a space, and you wanna slice it so that you obtain sub subspaces. But now the thing is that for these individuals, every dot here is an individual. We, we know not only the age, but let's say also the, what could be the other variable, the the income okay the how much money they make all right so this could be somebody who's really young and not making much money this is somebody of almost the same age but making lots and lots of money right so then if we want to k anonymize in a multi-dimensional sense so both for the age and the amount of money there is the technique that we saw earlier with the lattice with that graph and trying to find all the possible combinations of you know how to 
plus how to kind of separate uh, different ranges of the data to find the right solution. Or there is this approach, which is more graphical in a sense that we see it visually here, that we basically, it's a clustering problem. So if we first identify two groups just based on the age, then I can also split those two groups into other two clusters based on the income. So then in the end here now, for example, I have four clusters, the ones who are young and very rich, I mean, with the high salary, the people who are older and high salary, older and lower salary, etc. Okay, so now we basically divided our data into six clusters. And uh, if we count the dots, so how many individuals are uh, kind of, uh, how can I say, down sample are matched into each single cluster? We have three here, we have four, we have three and three. So there's a K anonymity of, of three. And of course, we can split more because maybe this cluster, you can kind of see it yourself that one of the rules of clustering is that you want to cluster together things that are quite similar. So two dots, two individuals that are very similar to each other, they have a short distance between each other. So, you know, these have not a too big difference in the age and also not a too big difference in the, in the, in the salary, right? But this person here is somewhat of a, I wouldn't call it outlier, but it's quite different from those other persons there. So then with this logic of trying to keep the kind of the distance between the points belonging to each cluster to minimize it, then maybe one can decide, okay, maybe I'll do another split at this big cluster here. I'm gonna split it again in two. And so now the clustering becomes like the final solution for this space of the subjects is uh, is basically this one. So that we get one, two, three, four, five subgroups based on two variables. So age and what was the other, the salary, right? And with this solution, now in the end, the level of anonymity was two. This picture is taken from these slides. So if you wanna, there's, there's more examples there or some interesting things if you wanna go and check but basically it's a it's a clustering problem that you might have seen with other techniques because this uh, kind of you know putting labels to data that this could be data points and you just want to you know find uh, group the points the points together there are many many techniques so now now this technique that i showed you here in this methods for anonymization is called the Mondrian method. But basically, this is a so called um, uh, tree clustering. So if you're interested to know more about clustering, if you just want to play with clustering, I recommend the, the package. Let me see if I find it quickly. I, sh I will add the link. There's a Python package called scikit-learn. And there, we have many, many methods of clustering. So now this is, you know, once you map your data, in this case, you know, imagine that once again, every dot here is, what did we say, the age and the, and the salary, all right? Of, of course, I mean, these patterns are a bit silly because it would be strange to find a group of individuals where the age and salary, when you map it, it, it really looks like this, but maybe, you know, this one, it's actually quite realistic that you have many young people with not a high salary, kind of middle age people with quite a high range and very rich elderly. Well, of course, I don't know if this is realistic actually, but anyway, um, you know, the idea here that there are every of these um, columns in this picture here is a different clustering method. So then the anonymity you know, if, if these are kind of the raw data where you see each individual, now you see the age and the salary with a fine grain precision. Now the clustering method would basically find labels and just, and so that you would replace both the age and the salary with just a number, basically the, the number of the cluster, cluster one, cluster orange, cluster blue, cluster green, right? And then you need to describe in your 
anonymization technique that all the young people who you know have a small salary fall into cluster one and etc cetera, etc cetera. so now the problem with the clustering of course is always that where do you draw the line that the solution for the clustering problem always comes from the data so if we go back to our reference page you know in this specific case they identified this in they identified these lines so this is how they cut the space you know but now if i get a new subject is are these lines valid also for the previous subject or you know do, I, do we need to move to start moving the lines because now we have a we have a new subject so these are generic issues that are also brought here that are related to clustering because often when you run clustering as you can see here for all these methods to run in clustering you might get very different very different solutions so like here this orange cluster has this core here and a little bit of those but i don't know here for example it's it's clear that they don't belong to the same cluster so there is this kind of how can i say um it's not exactly to say randomness but kind of you know uh, lack of robustness in the solution that you might get which might be dependent on your on the data that you have and on top and then the second important risk when it comes with this clustering is sometimes to give a name to the cluster so in the simple picture here it was quite easy to call these young adults and older adults and you know rich and poor whatever but in the when the cluster starts to be more complex with some strange borders you know you you don't have a clear cut of uh, of you know some amount of age or amount of salary but things starts to to get more complicated and it becomes difficult for you to say okay cluster one are those people that you know follow some sort of a boundary between them and the other people in the data set. so like here you see all this in this other type of data set, all the type of boundaries that you can have that are not just simple straight line so long story short is that you can then take your tabular data map it into a clustering problem and then if you're skilled with some programming language that uses this clustering technique you can then cluster your, your data and after the clustering you can then look at the data and say okay I've reached the level of k anonymity and you count basically the smallest amount of subjects that fell into one cluster like we did here that after this clustering the smallest amount of subject was two so this was a k anonymity equals to two so this was the only <laughs> I wouldn't say difficult but a little bit more complex part and now for those who want to have fun i collected some uh, toolboxes and packages and examples that i found i'm sure there's more and i'm sure you can find more and actually feel free for example i wasn't able to find anything with matlab so if somebody here is a matlab fan please help me find some k anonymization Basically, I was searching for for examples of codes and toolboxes and packages that would have implemented some of this canonization. So now we still have 30 minutes. And um, for those who want to, you know, take these 30 minutes to play a little bit with these things. So you can pick out of these links the one that you prefer and try to rerun it yourself. So this is a blog post, for example, but in this uh, medium blog post, they, <clears throat> they provide the data, they provide the code. So it shouldn't be too difficult to rerun the, the same thing. But if you know that, you know, you don't wanna spend the rest of your afternoon debugging someone else's code, if you are unsure where to start, then let's do together this one or try to do this one there is in this github repository there there is an example which is basically applying k anonymity to this old data set this is a um, data set from the 
census, the American and the United States, it has many, many lines. So um, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to use it with, um, with this, um, what's the name, Amnesia tool? Amnesia, yeah, I was forgetting the name. <laughs> so, so here inside this folder, Canonimity, there's a, there's a Python script that basically calls the, some functions from this package and uh and runs this uh, this um this type of uh, anonymization that we saw with this lattice the acronym is ola that i never something lattice something else uh, optimal lattice anonymization yes and this is actually the paper where they started in the field of anonymization to use this lattice this network of anonymization options. So I reopened the breakout rooms. You can, those who want to watch somebody coding and trying this to run this example, they are free to watch. And, um, and then, you know, we can, if you maybe spend, like if you're familiar with Python and, uh, want to take this little challenge i would say that maybe in 20 minutes you should be able to download the code install the tool get this data in the example and try to run this uh, python script and then look at the output so what i did and what i can show if we come back here in 20 minutes is that um uh, you can convert this into a notebook, a Jupyter notebook, so that you can see interactively how this algorithm. And if you want to try this, I you can try multiple levels of K. Like I would recommend 5, 10, and 100. All right, so that you see the different input. And I can give you a hint if you're taking this exercise that there's an error in the code here. I didn't put it myself, but I noticed that the person here did an error. So this is an extra challenge for you. Try to fix the code because there's an error. And uh, so, yeah, let's spend 20 minutes doing this. Those who don't know Python and don't want to watch other using Python and maybe want to use Tata or R, just spend some time with this um, uh, packages that I recommend here. Try to see if you can install them. They all come with some tests, with some examples. So these are 20 minutes that you can, that those who, who know how to code can spend kind of looking at these options. I would not recommend like this Python and AR acts are really good. It's the state of the art, but it's really tedious to install it. It's gonna take you an afternoon to get it set up. So don't go there, or at least not, not now. So let's go back at 1450 and you can ask questions, of course, as usual. And everyone is back. I closed the room a little bit early because I thought it's a sunny day. <laughs> we don't need to stay here until 15. But uh, in general, did anyone manage to, you know, I'm not even saying run the example, but install the, this crowds package for this example so exactly i was getting exactly what um who was mentioning it i don't remember was it that um, nothing came out so what i did here i'm sorry if this is a bit boring for those for those who do not code and do not want to learn about the code but by the way for at least for you you can already write the feedback for today on the HackMD. So before leaving, if you have time, just, you know, especially something that could be improved in the in the future, because, you know, maybe this was useful for some of you, but not all of you. So if you can spend one minute on the HackMD chat page to write some feedback at the bottom. But yeah, so for testing these crowds package, which is just a simple package, that does this uh, optimal lattice anonymization. So first I create a Python environment because I don't want to mess my environment. So outside of Jupyter, 
I ran this command. I can share this with you, of course, if you find it useful. And then I copied the code that was coming from GitHub. So basically the code of the example here. And uh, where's the Jupyter here? And so all good. And I store it. Then I load this adult.csv. And then, okay, I just showed the, the data here. I actually sorted the data by this value here. If you are curious, this data is from some Kaggle competition on the American census, and this is some sort of weighted score that kind of depends on multiple background factor of, a, of an individual. But uh, for this data set, long story short, it's, it's just quite a, you know, it's, I'm not saying that everyone has a unique number, but it's a good way to sort them. So that, uh, because in this data set, they didn't have a subject ID. So in that sense, uh, I didn't, I couldn't sort them otherwise to compare the before and after. And uh, so, yeah, this is the original data. There's some ages, some uh, whatever work plus this uh, weight, this functional weight, whatever is the meaning, education and other background variables from the census. And then I run this code like they did there. So what I notice is that uh, the variable age, so if one looks at the code, they're basically defining the same thing that we did with amnesia. So for age, they define a generaliz generalization rule so that uh, instead of being the original fine grain age, it should be mapped into something different using this generalized age rule and the rule is defined here. So what I notice is that in the original code, where was it here? Oops, we had to get out. No, what have I done? In the original code, which is here, the value that is compared is it's not the age, it's the year of birth. So it's not gonna work because the value that they have in the data is not the year of birth, it's the actual age. So for all the values, it, you all will get here the, this generalization. So then what I did in the fixed version, I converted the value of age that is passed there into like a somewhat hypothetical year of birth, assuming that the year 2020 minus, you know, the age would provide the year of birth. So this was the bug that, you know, that I was like, why is that working? I should, I should tell the, that person of that Python package that they could fix the example at least. So if you fix this, basically it's, it's a similar to what we did earlier, that uh, it's for the, for the variable age is going to apply this kind of clustering or binning divided by the, by the range. For the variable sex, instead, uh, when it's like specified like this, it means that there is no generalization rule. So the variable sex is basically set to kind of, it, it doesn't contain information anymore. So then when I run it with the correct code, then I get exactly this. So here, before running it, you see I get 25, 23, 46. So basically young adult and not young anymore. And here, yeah, I get, you know, after you run it, in this case with k equal to 100, the, the code actually works. And then where is the variable sex? The variable sex, uh, in this case, yeah, in this case, the variable sex is not suppressed because I set a k of 100. If you would, if you, if your requirement would be much higher, then you would also suppress the variable sex. Maybe let's try it for fun. Let's see if, uh, if it works. No, maybe I'll increase it even more. No, no, that's something weird now. So age has been removed, the sex has been left there. So this, this script also provides the output as two variables. One is the kind of rearranged data and, um, and the other is kind of 
the level of anonymity. So in this case, age went to the level two, like we had with amnesia, so it gets completely removed. But sex is still there, fine grained. So maybe we need to have a k value that is extremely high to get rid also of the sex uh, category. I always rerun all cells, by the way, because I don't trust Jupiter. Okay, now I guess we have to one has to go really high because maybe there's too many 32,000 rows. All right, but basically you got the idea. I can share this. I mean, the code is the same. What I added, I added this. So unless you want to see how I create my environments <laughs> before running things. Okay, but then please, there's still in the last two minutes that are left, please write some feedback. 